Good evening, Internet of People. Um, today is two weeks since I got home from hospital after surgery to trim a herniated disc that had been impinging on my sciatic nerve for the last 18 months. Um, I wasn't given any extra home support hours on being released from hospital, despite a uh, verbal assurance that I would get extra hours. Then last week, um, I had a phone message from somebody in physical and sensory disability services to say they would try to review in the middle of last week rather than this week, which marks the two week point at which they said they would review. By the time I had the spoons um, to return that call, everyone involved was just out of the office until this week. So this morning I called the office and got a call back from the person who had left me that message. And she said that she would ask Joanna McMorrow, who's the manager of the service, for the Northwest Health Area, said that she would ask Joanna to give me a call in the afternoon. Um, I fell asleep around lunchtime because I got about four hours sleep last night. Um, and when I woke up at around five, realized that um, I hadn't got a call back but when I was looking through my phone details, realized that I had two numbers in my phone, which were titled Joanna McMorrow. And I discovered that one of them was a mobile number. So I rang that, not expecting it to still be a, a live number, not expecting to get through. And Joanna actually answered the call. Um, and said she had been in meetings all day and swore blind that she would uh, call me first thing in the morning. Um, so we shall see whether that happens and what the result of that is. So that's my current status. Um, this morning I did have to explain again to one of my PAs that the surgery was not a cure for my disability. I said it to her before when I came back from hospital because I suspected that she imagined it to be a cure for my disability. Um, and I thought I was quite clear in saying, no, this was a specific injury. It happened 18 months ago and the surgery was dealing with that specific injury. And when I talked to her about it this morning, she said she had imagined that I would maybe go back and have more surgery and then go back and have more surgery and then be cured. Um, this is very much typical ableist thinking, particularly when your the nature of your disability is unfamiliar as a disability. It's very much like when I was in school and I didn't have the terminology for visual impairment. <clears throat> so I used to tell people that I was very short sighted and their response was, well, why don't you wear glasses? And I think that if you haven't been in the position of having to explain your life on a daily basis, you won't realize how exhausting that is. It's a form of microaggression, even though it's not meant as aggression, but it does come from ignorance. It's the same kind of ignorance in some respects as early non-white immigrants would have to a white area where uh, people have an assumption that the colour of your skin is because you haven't washed it and, you know, expect the colour to rub off. 
it's that kind of really negating ignorance and unthinking ableism that just grinds you down on a daily basis and amounts to structural ableism, which it is. It's also very much based on a medical model of disability, of disability understood in terms of an illness. Now, a lot of us, we talk about chronic illness because that's one of the ways of understanding a condition. Lots of long-term conditions can be managed via long-term medication. Um, but a treatment is not the same as cure. Um, and when you have long-term conditions, you're not necessarily looking for a cure or expecting a cure. Um, I never have expected a cure, but I have expected diagnosis and I have expected medical professionals to have a minimal kind of scientific interest in what's going on with my body, particularly since I have the combination of a congenital visual impairment with a long term chronic pain condition, which I certainly believe is a hypermobile EDS of some description. Um, and like a lot of people with chronic conditions, I've had doctors say to me, you know, you might have to just give up and not try and get a diagnosis. But that's not acceptable because we can't make informed choices about how to manage our conditions if we don't have all the information available. And for example, when my pain condition first became chronic, I stopped working, um, partly with an expectation that I might find some kind of diagnosis and treatment and then find a way to return to work. Um, I even applied for and was accepted into a postgraduate training course to become a second level teacher because I felt that maybe if I can't do workshops where I'm lepping around the place and being energetic, maybe I can do classes where I'm sitting in a chair and just engaging verbally with students. Um, it turned out I wasn't actually up to attending that course, even though it was a part time course, because I didn't know anything at that point about how chronic pain impacts on your energy levels. And certainly by the time I had deferred that course for a second year, I was worse than when I had started, not better. Um, and that decline has continued in the now 12 years since I first presented as a chronic case. So that's a bit of background about where I am. Um, I managed to have a sort of a bath this evening. I put a little bit of water in the bottom of the bathtub, um, got down into it with my bath lift, tried to have the water level so that it was just kind of up to my bum and did my best not to soak the dressing on my surgery wound, which is on my lower back. Kind of failed in that, but at least I wasn't you know, submerging it in hot water for an hour, which would be my idea of having a bath. Managed to wash myself with the use of a um, battery operated automatic sort of spongy thing that I got quite recently, although the batteries did kind of run down on me halfway through. So there was a bit of scrubbing and it's it's on a handle, but the handle is quite difficult to grip. It's not a very good shape or size if you've got poor grip like I have. Also, I had to wash with my surgical stockings on um, as I didn't have another way of washing them. I thought I might as well just wash them in the bath and then wait for them to dry out, which is they've nearly dried out now. Um, and likewise with my hair. You know, I'm 
managed to sort of wash it. Um, so, but you know, all of that is is very, very spoon hungry. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing my best to hang on the phone tomorrow morning um, and try and get some kind of review. On the plus side, I did find out when my follow-up appointment with the surgeon will be. That's also taken me two weeks just to get through to somebody who could answer that question for me. Um, that'll be a fortnight on Friday. Um, so hopefully after that, I won't have to avoid soaking the wound dressing and then I can get back to going to the pool for exercises, which I'm really looking forward to. I've missed that. It was too triggering for the disc herniation for the time that I had that. And yeah, it will be nice to get back to that and actually start building up what strength and fitness I can. Still love my chair. It's brilliant, you know, and my dog, Ari, has been quite brilliant as well. I did, I think, two sessions of clicker training with him to try and uh, pull the chair towards me um, with a rope pole that I've attached to it. And he's done that for me without the clicker, without the reward on a number of occasions now. Um, so, yeah, so I think he's getting used to that. And also, I think he gets the idea that he needs to bring it towards me, um, which is great. So, yeah, so he's he's been brilliant. Um, yeah, I don't know how long this is. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching and sharing. Um, and ask all of your election candidates what they are actually doing or will do for people with disabilities and make sure that you vote for people who talk about human rights, not, you know, care or institutionalization. See if they've ever heard of independent living, see if they've ever heard of web accessibility. And yeah, keep asking those questions. Good night out there, internet, wherever you are.